Hey there guys, I just ran a challenge where for every new subscriber I got to the High Red Bird YouTube channel, I would build a new toy for Magnolia Exotic Bird Sanctuary. So I wanted to show you guys the toys that you all subscribing helped me build and show some of those birds interacting with those. So if that is something you guys want to see, make sure to stick around because that's going to be coming up right after this. <laughs> guys, this is Jack over at High Red Bird, where I am tirelessly working to find new ways to make the keeping of exotic animals and pets more exciting, more affordable, and ultimately more enjoyable. Now, this video is going to be a little bit different. Um, I am going to show you guys some of what I have done with some of the toys that I made for Magnolia Exotic Bird Sanctuary. Now, a lot of these are going to be toys that I've shown tutorials on how to do in the past. They might be slight variations of some of those toys, uh, but if you guys have any questions about any of these toys, or if you would like to see a more in-depth tutorial on a particular toy, just leave a comment down in the comment section down below, letting me know which toys you would like to see more of. Now, I thought it was really, really important to put these toys together for Magnolia because they are a sanctuary. They take in a wide variety of birds, including birds that have medical issues, birds that can't be rehomed. Maybe they are blind. They have severe deformities. They need ongoing medical care. This sanctuary is able to provide them the care that they need, the medical care, proper feeding, uh, proper housing, proper enrichment, things that provide mental stimulation. Um, and all of that through the support of uh, online supporters, volunteers. So if you guys would like to know more about Magnolia Exotic Bird Sanctuary, I will put a link to them in the description section for this video. But let's go ahead and jump into the toys that I put together for the Magnolia Exotic Bird Sanctuary. All right, so as you guys can see, I put together a large storage tote of toys for Magnolia. Uh, the first toy that I wanted to talk about is going to be this variation of the Super Shredder toy that I've shown you guys before. Instead of just using cardstock, this one's actually done with uh, dyed craft sticks as well. I've shown you guys how to dye the craft sticks, uh, how to use the tools to punch them so you can put these together. Uh, these are a great option for birds that want to be a little bit destructive and the craft sticks are going to make them a little bit more durable than if it was just paper. Now these foraging toys are a variation of the stacked cupped forager that I've shown you guys before. So you guys can see there's the cups. You could hide food items inside those. The birds are going to have to figure out how to get in there, go through that shredded paper. There, you can also hide items inside the finger traps. So there's a variety of ways that you can use these. And you guys can see that for each of these different types of toys, there's a multitude of them. When you're making birds toys for a large collection, don't be ashamed of duplicating toys, duplicating ideas, because different birds are still going to benefit even if they get the same toy. Now, this one is designed for birds that are really bad at plucking their feathers. There is a lot of shredding potential here. So these are corn husks. These are made for uh, tamales. If you do not have these readily available, I'm really sorry because it means you probably don't have tamales readily available. Um, and these are done in a couple of different colors. They are just finger traps with those corn husks rolled up tightly and pushed through them. Then the entire thing is punched and strung up. Now, this is a basic PVC foraging toy. If you have really destructive birds, things like macaws, cockatoos, these can be a great option. Plus, it encourages your birds to do things on the ground. Now, this is a PVC slider toy, uh, so you can see you can have small food items. You can do pellets in these, and you can easily load them through the bottom. When you're done, go ahead and close that up. But your bird has to learn how to lift that PVC slider in order to get to the food items inside of there. So there's a couple of those. These PVC swings are probably going to be one of my favorite things for birds that might be a little bit chubby, maybe birds who don't fly. 
by using something that moves, a, a swing, a boing, some type of perching that has movement to it, your bird is still going to be using those stabilizing muscles. They are going to be maintaining their muscle tone. Your bird maintaining its muscle tone is going to be really, really important to its metabolism. It's going to have an impact on its hormone levels. Its entire body is going to be dependent on that. So those are going to be great options. Now, these coffee filter puffs can be a great shreddable toy. There's about 200 coffee filters in each of these, but you can also use them as a foraging toy by putting small food items inside of those things. Now, I also put together quite a few pre-loaded foot toys. These are going to be a great option because a lot of times for a sanctuary, you don't have as much time. You're dependent on volunteers. So having things that are already put together, like those boxes that are filled with shredded paper and pumpkin seeds. Here we have some finger traps that just have a craft stick and some pumpkin seeds. Um, those are all preloaded. Those are ready to go, especially with things like this. When you are feeding out your birds in the morning, it's really easy to just put one of those on top of the food bowl. Here we have a version of the shredder toys. So again, that tamale corn husk inside a finger trap. Now, because some of these are going to be loaded with food items beforehand, I want to make sure I have this storage container with a gasketed lid that's going to deter insect pests, that's going to deter rodents. So that's going to be a great way to store a lot of different toys. And Magnolia Exotic Bird Sanctuary really does go through a lot and a good variety of different toys. Um, this event that I went to was actually part of them building a new facility for disabled birds, like this bird you see here with this damaged beak. This bird is going to need medical treatment. It's going to need its beak worked on its entire life. Now here you can see some of the birds interacting with some of these toys. Uh, this was one of the first I gave to an umbrella cockatoo. And I have to say it was very amusing that I went to the work of putting together this very large, uh, what I thought would be very fun toy. And the bird very promptly broke the string and took a single craft stick. Um, but you guys can see... It is having a blast with that single craft stick. So if you are just putting together things like those small foot toys, something that uses a craft stick, a finger trap, and maybe some pumpkin seeds or some type of uh, seed or dried fruit that your bird enjoys, you guys can see this is still a enjoyable toy. Now, this is one of the interactions I was proudest of. This is a blind scarlet macaw. So you guys can see that we did have to jostle that toy a bit just so the bird would know where it was. But as soon as that bird knew there was something in that location, you can see it is very, very interested in what is going on. For birds that are disabled, birds that are blind, birds that have mobility issues, a lot of times people can be hesitant to give them things, but they can definitely benefit from that enrichment. So I definitely encourage you guys to try things like that out. It was a lot of fun to give these items to Magnolia Exotic Bird Sanctuary, so I hope that I see you guys next time. I do need to say thank you to my Patreon patrons for helping to make these videos possible. You can find out more by visiting High Red Bird on Patreon or clicking the link in the description section down below if you would like more information. Thanks! Mm -hmm.